Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today we're going to talk about how much battery do you really need in an e-bike? This can be a tricky question, right? Because not only do you have to figure out how much battery you need to go a certain distance, but you also have to determine how far will a given e-bike go based on the manufacturer's specs. Because sometimes it'll say, you know, this e-bike can go 20 to 50 miles, and then there will be an asterisk that says, you know, this varies based on rider weight and terrain and conditions, etc. And there is some truth to that. There is a wide range of energy consumption based on those factors. But the most important thing is figuring out the real world range for you and how much range you actually need. The two biggest factors that are going to affect the range of an e-bike and how much battery capacity you need are going to be, first of all, throttle versus pedal assist. Whether your e-bike has a throttle like a motorcycle or whether it's powered by you pedaling it and the motor just uh, increases your pedal power. For me, I found a constant of the amount of energy that I use for both of these types of drives. We'll start with throttle drive. On throttle only e-bikes, I found that I use an average of 25 watt hours per mile on typical rides for typical throttle e-bikes. Now, what does this mean? For me, I average around 20 miles an hour. I'm mostly riding on street, so not a lot of dirt riding, and I'm on slightly hilly terrain. So not exactly flat, but not super big hills. And so for me, I find that I use about 25 watt hours per mile. If you use kilometers, you can convert that to kilometers. I'm going to show you how to use these numbers in a second to calculate exactly what you need. But first, let's talk about pedal assist, because that's the other side of the equation. Pedal assist is obviously going to be more efficient because you're helping the motor do a lot of the work. What I found is that for me, I'm mostly using a higher level of pedal assist. For example, on a one to five scale for pedal assist, you'll usually find me in like three or four. I don't do you know, a lot of level one or two because I'm just a little bit lazy. But for me, on average, in the same conditions as the throttle e-bike, so 20 miles an hour-ish, uh, slight hills and mostly on streets, I use about 15 watt hours per mile. So these are the two numbers that I use, and I'll show you how to modify them for you in a second. But we've got 25 watt hours per mile on throttle e-bikes and 15 watt hours per mile on pedal assist e-bikes. All right, so where do we go from here? To determine how far an e-bike is going to go, I do some very simple math. We'll start with, let's say, a 500 watt hour battery on an e-bike. This is a standard, a bit smaller than average, but you'll find this on a lot of bikes. So for a throttle e-bike, if it's got a 500 watt hour battery, what I do is I take that 500 watt hours and I divide it by my 25 watt hours per mile that I average on throttle e-bikes. And what that does is it gives me a range of approximately 20 miles on that throttle e-bike. Now, if I were to do the same thing for a pedal assist e-bike, I would take that 500 watt hours of battery, I would divide it by 15 watt hours per mile, and I would get about 33 miles of range. And again, you can convert this to kilometers if that's better for you. You can also reverse the math and go the other way. If you know that you have a commute that's 10 miles to work and 10 miles back, then you're not going to charge in the middle, so you need 20 miles, and you know that, let's say you're a cyclist, so you're going to use pedal assist, you can take that 15 watt hours per mile for pedal assist, multiply it by your 20 miles of range, and you will get a 350 watt hour battery. That is the minimum battery you would need if you were me pedaling with uh, pedal assist e-bikes. Now, let's talk about how you can convert this to something more appropriate for you. What I found is that, in general, my averages are a pretty good representation of most e-bike efficiency out there. Obviously, this is going to vary, but as I've discussed this with a lot of other riders, I found that 15 watt hours per mile for pedal assist and 25 watt hours per mile for throttle only e-bikes at around 20-ish miles an hour is a pretty good start. So if you have nothing else to go by, start with that. But you can also modify this to fit you a little bit better. I weigh 70 kilos or 150 pounds. If you weigh more, you're probably going to increase that uh, watt hour per mile number. So if you're at uh, starting with 25 watt hours per mile, let's say you're uh, you know, 100 pounds heavier than me, you might bump that up to like 28 watt hours per mile or 30 or so. You're not going to just double the, the consumption because it doesn't work that way, especially on flat ground. The weight of the rider is only going to slightly decrease the range. If you're in a really hilly area, though, heavier riders are going to use uh, disproportionately more energy because climbing hills with a uh, heavier load just takes a lot more power. But in general, if you're a heavier rider, you're going to increase that a bit. If you're a lighter rider than me, you'll be slightly more efficient. Uh, next, it kind of depends on the bike that you're working with. Uh, if you've got a really fat tire bike or something that's super heavy, again, you might just uh, increase the amount of energy you're using a little bit, maybe bump up that 25 a little bit. 
Uh, if you do a lot of hill riding, you're going to be a little less efficient. If you have no hills, you might do better than me, right? So uh, my numbers, 25 and 15, are in areas where there's a little bit of hill riding. If you are in a flat as a pancake, you know, you're riding around Kansas kind of thing, then you can probably get away with maybe uh, 22 watt hours per mile on throttle or 13 watt hours per mile on pedal assist. Or if on pedal assist you're doing a lot of the pedaling yourself, I've actually gotten down to like five watt hours per mile when I bump it into um, like level one pedal assist and I'm really doing most of the work. So if you're that type of cyclist and you're really going out to get a lot of fitness, then you can really drop that watt hour per mile down. But what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna start with my numbers and you can slightly modify those to fit you. And when it comes to battery size in general, I usually recommend to get a little bit more battery than you think. If you do this equation and it comes out to 550 watt hours and you've got an option for a 500 or a 650 watt hour battery, I definitely recommend going for a 650 if you can, just because you're almost never gonna think, man, I wish I had less battery. So if you can and you can spring for it, always go a little bit more on the battery because you never know how far you're gonna to wanna to ride, especially when you get on an e-bike and you realize how much fun it is and you just wanna start going further and further. So I hope this video was helpful for you in sort of estimating how much battery you think you'll need for your e-bike or how far an average e-bike is gonna go for your type of riding. Last but not least, it's time to announce the randomly selected winner from the giveaway of my last video. And the winner is... Mark Hari, so I hope I pronounced your last name right. Uh, just let me know which one of my books you'd like, either DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or Electric Motorcycles, and anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment down below. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't wanna wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. And one last note, I know there's not a lot of people left viewing the video now, but in my next video, we will probably be hitting 100,000 subscribers based on the rate the channel is growing right now. So I want to announce a little teaser. I'm going to be giving away two really cool electric vehicles. I'm not gonna tell you which ones yet. You gotta come back in a few days for the next video to see, but I definitely recommend checking back because this is gonna be a cool opportunity for two people to get some awesome electric vehicles for free. So make sure you check it out and I will see you guys next time.